Well, hello everyone and welcome to Stamp Chat. My name's Heidi Rhodes. Thanks for joining us. Today's guest is Mr. Baruz Nazre Esfahani and he joins us from San Francisco, California. Mr. Esfahani is a longtime collector and exhibitor of pre-1925 Persian philately. He's been collecting for more than 40 years as well as researching and exhibiting for the past 20 years. His areas of interest include postal stationery, postal history, provisional issues of Kahar dynasty, charity issues, and early airmail. As a Ruby Award winner member of AAPAE, Beirouz has a goal of putting gold medals exhibits together in every exhibit category. Only thematic topical is missing, but also in the works. Baruz is a member of Apex and specializes in expertizing Persian philatelic material. Over the last two years, he has helped reestablish Iran Philatelic Study Circle's expert committee to provide a low cost service to collectors worldwide with an emphasis on assisting collectors in Iran. As a Bay Area high tech executive, he works to increase the online presence of philately to bring the worldwide community closer. He established an IPSC online discussion group almost 20 years ago and is currently managing IPSC's website, Facebook page, and Telegram channel. Baruz and his wife Atusa and their son Kian are longtime residents of San Francisco. Today's stamp chat is sponsored by APS Expertizing. Have a stamp you're not sure of? Why not send it for guaranteed certificate of authenticity available only at the American Philatelic Expertizing Service. We expertize both US and foreign material. With about 100 experts, 180 experts on our committee. We would love to help you identify the genuine and forged stamps in your collection. Check us out at stamps.org. Well, thank you so much, Baruz, for joining us tonight. And thank you, everyone, for meeting us here on APS Stamp Chat. And take it away with your presentation, sir. Thank you, Heidi. Appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to thank APS for inviting me to uh, talk about the area that I'm uh, uh, sort of excited about and passionate about. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to try to uh, keep this presentation uh, uh, to something that anybody who has, they're just, they don't have to be advanced collector or with deep knowledge. Uh, but at least I'm hoping this will be useful for you to uh, do at least the first level weeding out of the lot of the uh, 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 junk that is actually in the market right now. Uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, just give a little bit of background about uh, the Ajar dynasty, the uh, stamps of Iran from 1865 to 1925, and why they are just so uh, uh, prevalent uh, of uh, uh, not genuine item on the market. Uh, so there were a few uh, reasons for that. Number one, uh, Iran uh, and Persia, when they sort of even the collecting started in the you know in 1800s and even early 1900s, it was a popular country, especially in Europe, for a new country to collect. Um, and because the material was not necessarily a lot of it available, a lot of replicas of forgers were created to to uh, basically for the European market. So so some of these forgeries started as soon as the actual issue came out. And they're not sort of recent or modern replicas or, or forgeries. Uh, then the other, uh, uh, so that's one issue which a lot of countries have that, so it's not unique to Iran. The other one that is um, more kind of unique to Iran is uh, due to the, uh, so the government being sort of perpetually uh, not financially sound uh, and not, uh, being able to pay some of their bills for the for the printing of the stamps or whatnot. So two things happened. One was uh, some, especially dealers in Europe would reach out to the postal service in Iran and ask them to order reprints uh, from the printing, which bulk of them was, I'm gonna explain by ancient day in Harlem, Holland. 
and directly ship them right to Europe for the collecting market. So these were technically authorized reprints, but were never designed to be put into postal usage. They, were, they never even made it to Iran, a lot of them. Um, and then, so those, the, the, the stamps made them, so these are actually reprints of the original made by the same company who actually made the stamps. And then those ended up getting, you know, uh, fake overprints or surcharges on top of them. There were unauthorized reprints that somebody who had sort of relationship with the government went to Europe and got stuff printed. Then because they were not paying their bills on time, they end up doing a lot of provisional issues using a, a newspaper printer in Tehran to print these very rough provisional stamps. So lots of these printers waste were sitting around. So those will get sort of sold off right from the printer. And so somebody will get the actual sort of physical sheet and then they will just fake the overprints on top of it. So again, these are all there on top of just normal forgeries if everything is there. And I said, so this talk is to help you weed out the easy ones. Um, and then for more detail, I'll, I'll provide resources. But in any case, for any high value items of Iran, certainly pre-1925, you should consider sending it for some sort of expertization or somebody to take a look at it. So don't pay a lot of money for something without a cert next to it. Um, I'll just give you an example. I mean, they got sheets and sheets of these. I, I usually have a box that I, when I find these junk stuff, I put them in there and every year or two, I have a bonfire and I just take the whole box and burn all of them. Uh, and they still piles back up. So wherever I find them, I just collect them and burn them instead of just putting them back in circulation. Uh, so again, these are, as I said, these are, some of them are forgeries. Some of these are official reprints, uh, but they were never designed for that. And some of them were reprints with fake uh, overprints on it. And I'll go over each one of them separately. So this was just a quick little background of why there's so many junk out there and uh, that, that and there's so many different flavors of it. Uh, so I'll, I'll share this with uh, you also, and I'm gonna to try to put it on the chat. So where can you go get some help if you wanna learn more about this and how we can work it? So for certification, the three that I recommend, one is uh, Apex, uh, uh, they're, 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 they actually send uh, Iran material to myself and one or two other people who I know know the material well and they can actually uh, give you good sound advice on it. Um, as Heidi mentioned, IPSC has started their own uh, expert committee service and we're in US, in Europe and in Iran. So uh, you can send it locally to one of those. And, and then, uh, then the other one is uh, Mr. Sadri who's in Southern California who's one of the preeminent scholars of Iranian philatelic, and I think all of us owe a debt of gratitude to him for actually doing amazing research and publishing uh, uh, very detailed reference manuals um, that, I've, that I've listed below. These are the latest edition of him, uh, which instead of just a pure price catalog, they actually has detail of how to distinguish some of these forgeries uh, how do, uh, what are the varieties? So he's done quite a bit of work on it. And I think uh, I refer to his work and uh, he certainly is uh, one of the ones that you can uh, send for any kind of expertization. And for books, uh, beside the standard catalogs that are out there, uh, Mr. Sadri's uh, reference manual are excellent sources. And these are the uh, three latest versions of item for pre-1925. He's done some work after that but these are for the uh, older material. And the Iran Flatic Study Circle also um, publishes its own catalog and bulletins, and it has a wealth of information on there um, about Iran Flatic in general, not necessarily you know, you know, specifically on how to detect forgeries, but if you just were interested in Iranian Flatic, uh, the, the over close to 5,000 pages of the bulletins since they started in the 1940s, it's, it's quite a bit of a wealth of knowledge of many people who have added to it. Uh, so this is another resource for if anybody's interested in uh, uh, collecting some of these things. All right, so what I did here is to understanding uh, uh, the, the, how bad or how prevalent the issue is. 
is I've just sort of listed the major issues of, uh, of pre-1925 Iran. And I, for each one of them, I said, are there forgeries out there? Are there actual real rep official reprints? And there are also unauthorized reprints or printer wastes. And the ones that I've sort of highlighted in, uh, in yellow are the ones that are, I'm gonna talk about in this, uh, in, in this talk because those are a little bit easier to at least pick out some of them. And hopefully that would help uh, you guys get going. But as you can see, there are only a handful of issues, uh, like five of them, that doesn't have any reprint or forgeries on it. Almost everything has either some sort of reprint, which was official, or, uh, or has basically forgeries on it. Uh, so th this is just uh, gives you an idea of uh, the issues. Now, the, the lions uh, were the one that were printed in Iran. There are numerous books on it. There are 50 different versions of forgeries of it out there. And it, just, it, it is definitely needs a little bit more technical expertise and you cannot just quickly weed them out. Uh, so that one, I, I, I'm going to not discuss that because that could be his entire uh, sort of conversation presentation just on the lines alone. Uh, then the issues of 1876 all the way to 1891 were done by the Austrian uh, printing works, uh, government printing offices in Vienna. Um, and they actually did not uh, create any, uh, uh, they didn't, there's no sort of forgeries. There, there's a little bit of, uh, some of them have some forgeries on them. Uh, of the first two sets of issues, uh, uh, we'll discuss them. Some people call them sort of un, unauthorized reprints, but they really are just forgeries. It's just the person who did them happened to knew the post office. But then the rest of the issues, um, fortunately, they were free of uh, forgeries or reprints. Then in 1894, um, uh, all of the issues uh, that goes, uh, the, the, all the issues that is printed all the way to these types of and the provisional ones uh, were all done by Enchede and every single one of them, the base stamp, uh, 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 two or three major dealer in Paris, uh, um, and Mirza Hadi was one and was another one, um, had placed order for reprints directly for all of these issues. Uh, so bulk of them later on in the 1920s were printed, reprinted in various shape and shipped directly to Paris. So, and that is what's the most amount of headache for Iran collectors because these reprints are just not for postal usage and cannot be considered genuine. Uh, and then, so it, as you can see uh, where some of these issues are, and then these are the last batch of them. Uh, again, sadly, with the exception of the 1924, every single issue out there in this page has either forgeries or reprints on them. So this is just a quick little background on uh, just all of the issues and uh, which one you can just say, okay, at least I know if I get a stamp from this issue, I'm not going to have a problem. And those are really only four issues. Every single one of them has something on there you have to worry about. Uh, so the first one I'm going to talk about is the first portrait issue. This was the first issue printed by the um, Austrian printing work for us. And it was a portrait that the king, uh, uh, the Nasser Eddin Shah, in four denomination, uh, the currency was in Shahis, uh, and 20 Shahis was one Tehran. Um, and 10 Leran was one Toman. So these are the one Shahi. And just a five, so a domestic rate was a five Shahi. Um, and at this, when it started, the foreign rate was also five Shahi. So it, these are the genuine stamps that were printed. Uh, a gentleman named Boital, who was an engineer and who was working with the, uh, the Iranian post office, um, went to the, to the actually Austrian uh, printing and ordered a set of reprints, although it was not really authorized by the government. Uh, he just basically asked them and they did it. So they actually used a different cliche than the original. And this one is easy to pick apart. The, the little tie of the king has a little bit of a, has a little button on the tie itself. So these, you can easily, you know, you can easily pick these. And these are, some people call them reprints, but they're technically forgeries because they're not the genuine item and they 
nobody asked this person to go print these. Uh, but they're at least easily, you can easily weed these out. If you just need a little bit of a magnifying glass or take a quick look at them. As you can see, the, the portrait looks a little different, but the little, little pin on the tie, uh, this little dot, is the easily identifiable version of it. Uh, so this is the first one that you could yourself just quickly go and weed your collection out and get rid of these guys. If you have any questions on some of these, uh, uh, I'll try to get back to them, but uh, you can uh, put the questions and I'll try to answer them. All right. The, now, uh, Spear Brothers also did a forgery of these. And as you can see, I mean, these were kind of crude, so you can tell they look different. Almost all of them have these dot cancellation, which they never existed in Iran. So these were never used in Iran. So that's a dead get away with any of this stuff with this dot cancellation. It's, they're not real. Uh, one and then the uh, this was they did a pretty good job uh, of this forgery compared to the original item, uh, but still it's not the same uh, as you can see. This is this is an absolute forgery. Uh, I consider the Boytel those forgeries also, but you know some people call them reprints, which I disagree with. All right, so this was the. Uh, again, these are the easy to weed out of the first issue and you guys can go through them. So the next one I'm going to show is the second issue, which was they use the same cliche, uh, the, uh, the, Aust the Austrian government printing office, but they put um, uh, color, uh, uh, basically they use color borders. Uh, the, the, the top four values were in Shahi, one, two, five, and 10 Shahi, and then the bottom two are in Quran, so one Quran and five Quran. And uh, this was right around the time uh, Iran was, uh, Iran joined UPU in 1877, so technically these were still not compliant with UPU regulations. They didn't have the nomination on them or the country on it which they resolved later on, but this was how it was originally done. And uh, the boy child again went to uh, the, the, the office and set, did his own printing. So now he actually made a couple of extra colors of them also. So he went from, you know, he did one, two, five, and 10, both in Shahi and Iran as far as he was concerned. So he just, he made his own. And these, um, even if you can't tell that the, portrait is different, the easiest way to tell them apart is the agitator of the cap of the king. If you notice these, there's clearly a distance here, whereas these, all of them actually touch the top. So the, the agitator is short and is actually there. So you can just, this can be quickly weeded out uh, that the genuine one has a, this, you know, is a distance up here and the, the one below it, it's not. So this, these are the, called the short agitator reprints, but again, these, even with the naked eye, you can just weed these right out. All right, sounds good. Uh, so um, I'm going to, uh, I'll go through it and then I'll come back for questions on each one of them, we can give more detail. Next one, so this one is an interesting one because I see more fake of this issue and these are forgeries, they're not even reprints. I, I see more of this in dealers' booths and dealer stock than, than almost any other Iranian material. These are just there by the, by the hundreds and hundreds, and there are sheets full of them out there. Um, and uh, so in 1881, um, um, the, the king um, was fascinated by the European, um, you know, systems and wanted to bring the country closer. So what he, the, what they wanted to do was to create a set of, uh, set of stamps that actually had dual currencies on them. They had on the top uh, one Shahi, two or five, but then they will put the other value in centim, uh, five centim, 10 centim, and 25 centim uh, in them. So these were supposed to be in the uh, fresh, you know, in the franc currency. So, and uh, franc, centim and franc, and shahi and Iran. Uh, so they put these out. Uh, they first, they were really short on stamps. So they did a quick set of lithography, uh, printed a small batch in early 1881. These were done by lithography. 
And then they later on, they printed these uh, in the research and engraved issues. Uh, so the top is the lithograph issue. And um, there's not really a forgery of those, although there is a forgery of this, which is actually much harder to find than the genuine item. So I'll, I'll not worry about finding that. And then, then you got this research issue, which is there, 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 there are thousands of forgeries of this one. Uh, you can first of all tell them apart quickly. This one has a white, uh, the litho has the outer edges of white. And these guys have, this is like a red here, a violet here and a green border. So you can quickly tell them apart. I mean, although you can see that definitely that one is flat printed, this one is not. But the biggest issue is the top is the real item. And these were forgeries printed in Paris. So these were not, re these are actually, they're pretty good looking forgeries. Uh, they, are, they are very close to the original. Um, two biggest giveaway, and that one again with a naked eye you can see, and this is probably, the, you, this one you absolutely should pay attention to because you see a ton of this. Go on eBay right now, see how many of this you see. Um, the, 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 the numbers around the, 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 it's like the five, 10 and 20, and then the scroll work below it, these two are clearly different color. This is darker, you get a nice shading, the scroll work has a lot of shading on it, but these guys are basically flat. So the green down here and the green up here, they're either the same. Same thing with the violet color here. So that's, that's the biggest thing, by, with naked eye, even with poor scan, you can quickly tell these apart, that this is the genuine, this is not. Uh, so that's, I just have a better picture of it here. So this is the fake one. As you can see, they look very much alike. And these guys are, the, the colors are quite different. The other difference is uh, these arches around the sun on the one on the right hand side, there are these three lines. On the genuine item, the middle line is almost either not there or is very weak. And on the, and on the, on the fake one, they did a, they did a too good of a job. It's nice and beautiful and clean. So that's the other dead giveaway of these things. Uh, so you can quickly look at them and tell them apart. Uh, so this one again, so there's this version and there's another version of the same green one with the five on top. They gave up on this dual currency experience and they went ahead and did the uh, five. Uh, so it just made all of them the same. And I actually showed it up here. Where was it? Uh, so this, this one, this big uh, sheet here, it's the, it's the same one. It's the, this is a forgery. Uh, as you can see, the five color and the one down here is the same. And as well as the, the middle line here is as uh, nice and clean and strong. So again, this is a, the forgery. So these uh, four values that you see, uh, these, these three plus the one that has the five here instead of 25 in green. These are the ones that you see by the hundreds uh, in the market. Uh, so I really hope you guys pay a little bit of attention when you buy, or if you're a dealer, just check your stock and at least clean these out. Uh, the, the rest of the dual currency issue, uh, the forgeries are quite crude and you know it's they're just quite obvious. Uh, somebody tried to do this and uh, did not do a good job at it. Um, and these things came out. Um, I have to make a note on this one, especially that uh, about 15, 20 years ago, uh, the Austrian printing office uh, sold off their entire archives. And the original cliches that were used to print all of these stamps were sold off. <clears throat> and they're actually on the market. And in the last 10 years, we're seeing examples of leased stuff showing up from the original cliche sold as proofs or pre-production material that, you, that they're done on basically using the original cliche that somebody bought and it, what is done fraudulently these days. So you have to be really careful on any proof material that this stuff shows up that are imperf on thicker card, whatever it is. If you get offered those, do not buy them without certificate. So there are some genuine ones, but these are what I call a modern forgery using the original cliche that is showing up on the market. So just be careful, uh, especially on, on these. The stamp, the genuine stamps, are, you know, the forgeries you can quickly tell apart, but these proofs are a little bit difficult. So make sure that you get them, somebody else to look at it before you pay money for those. 
So that's the 1881 dual currency issues. And as I uh, mentioned, uh, the other issues uh, after this uh, did not have a lot of, uh, there is overprint that, that they put for surcharges and all those overprints, they, they're not easy to weed out. So it's not something you can do by quickly. So those really need somebody to look at them. So I'm not gonna discuss them. The other uh, issues that, that were printed in, in before 1891, fortunately, uh, did not, uh, fortunately did not have forgery, so they're, they're safe to collect. Uh, now I'm gonna move to uh, the 1894 issue. And again, this is the first issue that um, Encha did for Iran. And then there's subsequently, after the king was assassinated in 1896, the new king came, they did two more sets, uh, one after another in 1897 and 1899. And all three of these issues, plus a few other ones, uh, Enchina did a beautiful job. They're really good looking stamps. However, every one of them, Mirza Hadi ordered two, 300,000 of each set as reprints to be sent to Paris directly to him and he sold them off. Uh, so what you see in the market, mint ones and a lot of the, they're just unfortunately large percentage of them are these reprints that they're not the originals. Uh, again, these are not, they're, because they were done by the original printer, uh, they're not quickly identifiable. They're actually, they're, they're very well done work. Um, so it is not easy to just weed them out yourself. Uh, but I'm going to tell a little bit about it so at least you know what the differences are. Um, and uh, if you want to uh, study more about them, I'm happy to help. Um, so first of all, they tend to be, uh, uh, the, the printing is not as sharp as crisp. The biggest thing is that since these were never designed to be used on postage, the gum on the back of them is really poor quality and very thin. Almost all of them, if you actually go lick them and try to stick them on, a, on an envelope, they'll just fall off because it's just such a poor quality gum on the back of them. And also because some of them were so thin that the, in, the, the actual impression from the front of the stamp actually shows up on the back as embossed. So you actually can see the impression of the stamp on the gum because the gum was so thin and such poor quality. Uh, also, they typically have these dead white looking chalky gum on the back uh, instead of uh, the, the real gum, which was thicker, that crackles a little bit. So, and, and, then, and then also the color of the paper is just off here and there. Again, this is, I'm just mentioning that because this will uh, uh, sort of go through a lot of other stuff uh, later on. But again, it's not easy to just pick these off just by looking at them. Uh, so unfortunately these need it, but you have to be aware of it. So if you're looking, uh, just be wary of these issues. They have just, just way too many reprints of them out there. And they also, people wanted to have uh, these things to be, uh, people collected used stamps. So they're actually postmarks that are close to the original, but these were actually only used on these reprints to create cancel to order ones. Um, and like typically bulk of them are the ones that are on the, you know, they're on the corner like this, uh, as you can see on all of them, bulk of them are like this. Uh, so again, this should give you pause that, Hey, there's something wrong. Uh, uh, there's one or two I want to make sure. So this particular Lengerud, this particular one here, and there's another one here, Rasht, and there's two more. These are sort of should be alarm bells. If you see any stamps with these, these postmark on them, they are highly dubious and you have to be really careful about them. I mean, 99% that they're not the reprints that you have. Uh, again, so there are specific, uh, yeah, so the Langerud is one, the Rash, this, this 12, 11 Rash, and, uh, and this, this Mashat 15, three like this, these specifically, these are used quite option. There's two other one that is used more. One is called Tonokabun and the other one is made on Tehran, which but again, there are like six of these things that are, it should really raise alarms, uh, alarm bear for you if there's something that's goes on, going on on this. Um, so I guess I'm gonna show you examples. So a lot of these stamp uh, that end up getting overprints on them also, uh, like you can see these, uh, 
arabesque overprint. These were for control purposes. Um, and then some other ones. The minute you see them with these kind of nice, clean, uh, you know, uh, quarter, you know, that these are all something wrong here. So, I mean, you just, when I, some people shows me, you know, albums to weed out and I'm just, the minute I see it, I just pass over these sheets all of the time because I know none of them are any good. Uh, uh, and and uh, we can go from there. Now, um, I showed this one also. I'm not, sorry, I'm just jumping up and forth, but you see this, this is another batch of uh, these, all these control overprints. These are all fake overprints, but the original stamps were these reprints. So somebody, they got the reprints and they ended up, because Iran started putting overprints on it, they start adding fake overprints. So these are really reprinted, official reprints with fake overprints on top of them. Uh, and again, these are not easily weed out. So I'm not going into detail how to weed these out. They're, they're not like sort of a quick glance that you can say hey, this is bad or not bad. Uh, all right, I'm just also going to continue down. So this was the issue of uh, of these issues again. To you can sort of if the, if if the image is clearly embossed on the back, that's a, something that you should pay more attention to. These kind of CTOs are definitely problematic, and these are not used. Uh, so again, you got to you at least you know these are probably not genuine. So just be careful buying them. Then I'm going to talk about. Then they started. Iran started doing a whole bunch of various control over prints on it. A lot of them were done because uh, during this time uh, the entire postal system was getting farmed out uh, as, as a concession. So uh, so somebody would some noble man will say, I'll just give the king you know this much fixed amount of money every year, but I'll run it post office as a business and whatever pro whatever profit I can pocket, I'll do it myself. So since these people changed quite often, the minute they used to take over, they, would, they were worried that the previous guy would just take a bunch of these things and just take it. There was not good inventory keeping. So they would add their own sort of audits or control overprint and say, okay, so if you haven't, if you don't have this overprint, then your stamps are not valid. Uh, so this, so they, there's a bunch of these out there. Um, again, the one I want to mention here is this Provisior 1319 overprint, which you see a lot of them. Um, again, there are like seven different flavors of forgeries of this. Uh, I'm just mentioning one that is very easily, you can easily pick it and it's, uh, it weeds out probably 80% of the junk you have. Is this 1319, the one is just dropped below. It's not, it's a short one underneath it, as you can see in all of these things. Uh, so this is one of those dead giveaway of about like 60% of the junk of this. It's not all of it, there's sadly more, but at least this can help you weed out a good chunk of it without having to worry about it. And you can see what the, the genuine item looks like. Uh, the, the shape of the three and the one is very specific. This line and this line, they sort of diverge, it becomes wider here. Again, there's, but, so these, you still need to get them sort of certified, but at least, you know, if you get these guys with the little one dropped out here, those are junk, so you can just quickly just weed them right out. So as I mentioned, uh, you know, the due to, you know, Iranian government were perpetually in financial issues. So when they would not pay their bills to Enchide, uh, they will basically not send them stamps and they need stamps. So they would start printing using some uh, 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 printing in Tehran called Farus Printing, who was a print, it was a, it was a newspaper printer using standard uh, uh, on the paper quality of newspaper on off using typeset. Uh, it, would, it would print some stamps for them and then the post office would add a control overprint on it to make it legitimate for postal usage. And so they had a bunch of these out there. Um, and again, so this issue in general, uh, next to the, 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 the dual currency I showed is probably the most forced issue of Iran and that you see by the hundreds in the dealers uh, booths and what's available out there. So there was a basic stamp and sorry, and they had a, so different issues came out with different kinds of overprint on them. Uh, and I'm gonna go over the two most basic forgeries that you can quickly weed out no matter what it is. 
so first of all, the, the same overprint that 1319 was also used on these uh, issue, as you can see what the original looks like. Then they have these rosette overprint that it says, you know, post and then the 1319, which is the 1902 in a lunar Hedra calendar, it's 1319, the date on it. Um, so there, there are straight up forgeries of these, and there's also uh, leftover sheets of the basic stamp with just a fake overprint on top of them. Uh, so I'm gonna show those. The, one, the, the, the two things, beside the, uh, the one that I mentioned with the drop one here, the other quick way of weeding out these that actually have a hand stamped it, the rosette overprint on them is that the date here, instead of 1319, it says 812, 812. So anything you see with 812, you can just quickly weed out. Uh, that's, you don't have to even look at them that much. Uh, so the 812 is an easy sort of a quick weed out and, th and that is bulk of the forgeries is the 812 one. Then the other one is, this I see a lot, is somebody actually printed these on a, these uh, very low quality ungummed uh, uh, buff paper and all of the overprints are just machine printed on them. They're actually printed instead of hand stamped. So if you see any of these with machine printed overprint, you can see what they look like, you know, how like a 1319 here compared to these, what they look like. These you can just quickly just put it in the garbage bin and just weed them right out. Uh, and there is, I uh, showed you, there are sheets and sheets. I have boxes of these. Uh, this was I don't know, that, so the, that I burned and they still, I found boxes of them. Uh, and to this day, I get, you know, sometimes in the APS, uh, the, when they send it for, for expertization, what I get are, I get these showing up for expertization. So this is the super easy to weed out. So if you have it, just put them in a junk pile. Um, the other one is that, uh, as you can see, so the overprints, uh, these octagonal ones were blue, these uh, rosettes were red, and these rectangular ones are black. Any other color you get, none of them are good. So here, are all sorts of color of these things. I mean, I have boxes of these. So these are, you got black, violet, greens, uh, get them all over the place. None of them are, these are all, you can easily weed out. If they're not the right color, they weren't really, uh, somebody did some of these things. A uh, lot of them are, these are actually printer's waste. They're not forgeries. And then they just have a fake and a colorful type of overprint on top of them. So again, this is another, uh, you know, easily identifiable, um, quick, you know, get rid of your, you know, large swath of uh, junk from these two issues. Uh, the next one that I'm going to talk about is, uh, again, in 19, between 1902 and 04, there was an issue that was entity provided, and it was actually very high quality, and there is no reprints, and there's no forgery of it. Then in 1906, they again started running out, and they ended up going to the same uh, printer to print another set of typeset issue provisionals. These were, again, also done in sheets of 12, but instead of, you know, vertical or horizontal, two rules of six, um, and what they did is that they have sheet number on them and they would send it to the post, to the post office and they would add their own, this says provisior, you know, uh, means temporary uh, with the line and sun control overprint on it. Uh, so again, this you see a ton of it out there. Uh, I'm, I'm sure anybody who has and a lot of dealer stocks, you see batches of these in there. So these are the genuine items. Again, as you can see, there are uh, the, uh, as you can clearly tell from this guys, they are hand stamped again and they're printed. Now, the, there are flavors of forgeries, but there are two of them that are super easy to clean out. Again, as you can see, the genuine item, these, the, the overprint is almost machine printed, is very clean. Uh, what you can tell is the this the the ye in Farsi. The, so here it's actually it's short. It stops here. It's very short compared to these that goes all the way up. So first of all, the, this these are quickly identifiable as a bogus one versus a genuine one. 
as you can see in all of them, you see how the, 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 this, this Y goes all the way up and all of these forgeries, they're actually kind of on the short side. And there's another batch of it also uh, that there is a break on, the, there's a break here and this thing is not that high going off. And again, this one was, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, these were never used postally. So I, I, they should not be, they're not really forgeries, but you can't really consider them genuine either. Uh, and there's a few other flavors of it. But at least this type, these super crisp impression that almost machine printed, you can weed out. You know, these are not genuine ones. So that's the issue of 1906. Now, the, uh, when the king changed and, uh, and, and he, he died and his son took over, there was one issue for Muhammad Ali Shah in 1907. And that was only in circulation for two years uh, when he was overthrown. Uh, and there are no forgeries or reprints of that. So that's also safe. So I'm just going to skip over that. I'm going to go to the, in 1909, when they knew they put his 11 year old son in power, they started printing issues. And this is another one of those that is, I'm going to talk about, unfortunately, it's not super easy to weed out, but it is, it is out there in the market by the thousands. Uh, it's a coat of arm issue, the original and on the reprints. Uh, so I'm going to give a few tricks on this, uh, but unfortunately, uh, unless you're familiar with them, especially on these Shahi values that don't have these gold or silver borders, uh, if you can tell, it's, I don't know how it's coming across, typically the, the inside is a beautiful maroon versus more brownish color of the reprints. The impression is much crisper compared to the, to the, to the reprints. Uh, here also, if you can, as you can see, the, the, the scroll work is, the impression is much sharper and cleaner. It is a little bit on the lighter and more vibrant looking color. Uh, uh, and then also the gold border is nice and clean. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later. So this issue, the high value is, that, is, that, is the last three values. It's, it's, you know, it's about 10, 20, 30 times more value than other values. So I'm gonna talk about how to at least get to, to look at the, those you can sort of identify. Um, so that's two things I wanna talk about this before I show that. One is, as I mentioned, because these, the reprints were not designed for postage, they had a very thin layer of uh, gum on them. Whereas on the original, the gum is thicker. Uh, the original has a thinner paper and thicker gum. The reprint has a thicker paper and a thinner gum. So what this does is a trick you guys can use is because you have a thick paper with a thin layer of gum on it, if you pick one of these that uh, is mint and you just put it on your hand, the heat of your hand alone will cause this thing to curl up. The paper will curl up a little bit, so you end up seeing a curling. Even if I actually leave it flat on a paper, the reprints will curl up because they have a thicker paper and a thinner gum. But the original, they would lay nice and flat because they were just thinner paper and it just lays flat. So that's a quick trick you can use. It's not bulletproof, but you, when I, you look at it, you can clearly see the little curls on these things. Um, now, on the high values, uh, so this one you can use on the top four value, which is like 90% of the value of the set. Uh, first of all, the gold border uh, on the original was done, uh, basically had complete verticals going and the horizontals were broken up. Whereas on the reprint, it was just one big square around it. On the original, the gold border does not bleed into the design. Whereas on the reprint, it always has a lot of bleeding into it. And the other issue is that because the border, the gold was done in two steps, there is a tiny gap. So you see these little white gaps. You see there's one here. You can see this little gap here. There's a white gap here. There's a white gap there because this was done in two separate steps. And here you can clearly see the bleeding here. So on this gold order, gold border one, which is the high value, uh, you can at least know, have a good suspect of which is a good one, which is not. If you see these little gap, it's, you know, 99% is, is an original and is not fake. And certainly you don't want to see this kind of bleeding. 
Also, this thing, the border tends to oxidize. They're either super shiny gold, which was wrong, or, and they ended up actually, because they use cheap ink, they end up getting this darker brownish color, whereas this actually stays this nice uh, golden color throughout. Uh, so yeah, this is not a sort of a sure way of quick weeding, but at least on the top four values, which is almost all the money goes there, you can weed out the bad ones from this. Next issue is the first portrait of the uh, Ahmad Shah. And this issue was printed and used for the, almost the longest from 1911 uh, all the way to 1922. This was reprinted and used. So actually, it actually has a real genuine usage. Uh, all right, uh, it, it definitely has the, um, uh, then later in 1922, they ordered a complete set of reprints. And this has caused more headache for Iran collectors than anybody else. So again, this issue is not, sadly, it's not something that I can tell you to quickly weed them out. But there are some things I wanna tell you, at least you know some of them that are good that you don't have to spend too much time on it. Um, so the originals were done um, in, um, the perf was 11 and, 11 and a half on the top and 11 here. They were a little bit done 11 and a half and there were also few values 11 and a half by 12. The reprints, almost all of them are 11 and a half except a couple of values like that. So if you see 11 and a half by 11, I can say 99% or more, that's a good stamp, that's the original. 11 and a half are suspects. Those are the ones you have to spend time on it. So, so first and foremost, you want to actually look at that. Second of all, typically speaking, the reprints, the color of Evenier is darker, it's not as crisp, um, and the gum on the back is these sort of flat, smooth looking gum instead of a little bit brownish little color, color one. Uh, there are other characteristics also, since these reprints were done at the very, very end, in 1922, uh, the engraving, the lines that basically go across and hash mark going up this way, uh, you start seeing a little bit damages on them. So you end up seeing these sort of almost vertical cracks on, the, on some of these things going down through them. It's, it's, and again, it's not, it's not on all of them, but you can sort of take a look at it and see it. Uh, so so I cannot give you quick weed out methodology, but what I can tell you is that if you have 11 and a half by 11, they're most likely good. The other thing that you should know is this is another example of the original. And if in this one, you can see this, you can see this cliche crack going up and down here and right up here. You can see the color is darker than the original also. And uh, you can also, so that those are things. And also the perforation is different on these guys too. The other thing you can tell is that the first original was using a, a wet uh, printing method. So what ended up happening after it went through the drum, the, uh, the, the, the actual stamp shrank a little bit. So the vignette itself, the, actually the, the picture of the king is actually a little bit shorter. Uh, so his face looks a little bit more chubbier. They call him the, you know, the chubby version. So if you have these chubby version, short vignettes, those are 99.9% .9 good. So, so the ones that you should spend time on looking at are these taller ones that are perf 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And those are a little bit uh, uh, to, to be able to figure out how it works. So again, this was not a super easy weed out, but it was at least something that you guys can think about and uh, at least take some of the good ones out. So these are some examples of, on the top are, uh, these are reprints. As you can see clearly, the, the color is darker than the originals. And also here you can see these are the tall vignette ones and these bottom ones are the shorter. And you can see the, the face of the king is a little bit chubbier at the bottom one. So you can sort of look at the genuine versus the reprint, just get an, get an idea of what you have next to each other. But again, this is not, I, this, uh, if, if you, uh, I mean, this is something that probably needs to be certified, especially if it's 11 and, by 11 and a half. All right. This is another example of the original versus some reprints. So once you have the original and you can look at them, 
you can kind of tell them apart, but uh, it's not a sure thing, but it's a, it's, a, it's a good indication of which one is a genuine one, which one is not on this one, and which one is a reprint. The other issue that came out, and again, there was a ton of reprints of it out there, and you see this all over, is the coronation issue that has Shahis in uh, this design, the Barans in, 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 a, in a different design, and the high Toman values in a third design. Uh, so these were printed. Sadly, the Shahis, they are not easy to tell apart. Their colors are different, but for each value is a little bit different. So I cannot tell something quick to do that. But on the other values, uh, the one with the silver border and the high value that has gold in them, there are some things you can quickly do to use it. So first for the, the original, the way they were printed, uh, the border on the outside was done in one shot. So there was one border. On the reprints, they were done in two. So if you actually hold the stem up to the light and look through it, on the reprints, on the corner, they're actually darker because they were printed twice. The silver was printed twice on it versus the rest of it. So that's one way you can quickly tell these. And my guess is that if you have a whole set and you end up having the the silver ones being reprinted, there's a good chance that all of them are junk. So it's not a good way of telling the Shahi, but take a look at these. And then also on the Tomans, when you look them up, the, the printing of the original, it's a nice solid gold that comes through. These, you can, you can easily see through them, it's kind of uneven. And also the score work around it, you know, as you can see, they're not that clean. So it's definitely more sloppier printing. Uh, but the easiest way is the silver border ones that you can just look up and take a look in a, you know, in a backlight to see if the corners are darker than the rest of the border or not. So, so that's on the, that. The other thing of this you see all the time are the same issue overprinted uh, for government use and for uh, uh, using on uh, waybills. Uh, and these, and this actually goes through for almost all of the other overprinted. The reprints, the overprints are very dull and matte and the originals are oily and shiny and you can quickly tell them apart. So these are very easy to weed out. And sadly, most of the things you see outside are these dull matte ones. And the reason is that the oils they used back then was they use sort of lighter oil and some charcoal soot and everything else mixed together to make these oils. So they were nice to a they're either oily so you can see them on the back, or they definitely have more <clears throat> more shine to them. So uh, the overprint of a lot of these issues, uh, if you see these very flat, dull mats that are not sort of oiling on the back end, on the back of it, those are suspect. But typically on this, you see a shiny one, those are for sure good. And, but, there, but this same rule sort of at least applies for you to have an initial thought process of, do I need to inspect more on other issues that came out around the same time? Again, this is very common. You see it on the, in ton of uh, dealer boots and on eBay, and sadly, almost all of them are the, these reprints. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is the this zinc plate issue. Again, after the, doing the, the typeset, they, they again ran out of money. So in three different times, in 1919, then later in 24, and in 25, they ended up, uh, uh, there was a, Somebody else actually in, in, in Switzerland produced a whole sheet uh, uh, on a zinc plate uh, that they were going to actually print forgeries. Somebody confiscated it and they handed it over to the Persian authorities and they ran out of money. So they brought this plate that some, somebody, some thief produced for forgery to say, oh, let's just use it ourselves for the real thing. So they brought the, the cliche they carved out, there was, the, there was a value of 13 shahi already on the plate. So they actually used knives to actually scrape it out, out, of the, out of the sheet of 100. And they actually ended up typesetting the value on top of this basic cliche. And, and they did that 
1919, and then later on in 24 and in 25. Uh, all of them, the, the basic underlying stamp has the same, it's the same cliche that was used throughout. They just put stuff on top of it. And this is super easy to tell apart also. And this is again, of the forgery, the genuine item under the word post here, the score was, there's only a one line here. And there's a second line that is very weak, but on the forgeries, it's, you can see two nice clean lines there. Oops, uh, sorry. Uh, you can quickly see the double line there. So this is again, super easy to weed out. And as I shown in the original picture, there are sheets and sheets of these, or, uh, these forgeries out there. And unfortunately, especially in United States dealer boots, you, you see these by the hundreds. Uh, so this you can, if you have a good eye, you don't even need a magnifier to weed these out. Uh, so again, you have to look for the double line above the post. And these are the ones that are uh, basically no good and you can just chuck them in your junk pile. The other ones are all, there's no, other, there's no problem with them and they're genuine. All right, so thank you so much. Uh, this was a really quick synopsis of some of the, the easiest weed outs you can do, uh, not too complicated uh, from, uh, from, uh, from the various issues. Um, I, my email address is, uh, I'll put it here uh, in the chat. If anybody is interested in you know, sending me stuff to take a quick look or any other question afterward, by all means, I'm happy to answer any question you might have on other issues of, uh, of Iran and especially these. Uh, I hope this was uh, helpful for just at least your quick initial weeding out of stuff, junk out of your collections. All right. Well, and so the, that, and thank you. And with that, because we're pressed for time, but uh, we're, there's a lot of interest. So uh, sure. we're going to we go, go ahead. I have time if, if, if people are available. I certainly have time. Great friends. Well, and uh, we do respect time constraints, but sure. but uh, we've got a lot of we've got a lot of good questions here. So starting from the top, um, this was from the beginning of your presentation. Did they pay face or get a discount? Was one question. Uh, so I'm sorry. I just want to know. Can you guys say the pace or face for which one? No, the stamps were. Oh, I mean the reprints. The uh, so I don't know what the contract with the printer was, what they would get, but uh, when you go to the post office, you have to pay face value to get these things. Uh, so I'm not sure if I answer your question. Okay, and uh, right. friend, you know you can go ahead and ask that question if you like, again, to be more specific, but moving on. Um, and I'm not sure if you answered this when you were talking about the 1902 uh, Tehran typeset, but this, person would like to know the color appears to be different on the early reprints but you don't mention this as a determining factor so yeah no. so on the on the over the color of the overprint uh, uh, is a little bit slightly different but again i was trying to give some idea of quick weeding out uh the not the something that is there the other uh so that's so that's the one thing i just want to make sure that it is there um but yes there color are slightly different on some of these things, some a little bit lighter. They're typically, they, they, because they did them at the later time, they did not give the exact color. They're a little bit darker sometimes. So you, can, you can see that they're not there. The printing is a little bit more sloppy anyway on these reprints. Okay, okay I get the... You're, are you seeing the question and answer as well? Or not? Yeah, so I, so it is possible, Frederick. Yeah, the the the, the dual currency ten, the the, the ten franc issue. Uh, yeah, the, the the original. I might have just. Uh, let me double check what I did. But so yes, let me just make sure. And, let, and I'll read. Yes, you're right. You're right. It's flipped friends. around. Yes, and yeah, yeah. There, it's it's my bad. I just. Uh, so it's 1881. Dual you're right. Sorry about that. Okay, so the 1881 dual currency, ten value, genuine and forgery. I answered that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he's now, right. I, I just my label below was mistake. I had to. I flip see. Them. I yeah. see. Okay, and then the Provisoire overprints. The genuine ones are better centered. Uh, yes and no. Uh, actually, uh, that's a uh, 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 that's a uh, interesting uh, question. On um, 
not on the, on the this was hand stamp, uh, they're about the same, so centering is not. There is a later issue, there was another provisor that was on in 1922, uh, that the genuine item is almost never centered because they printed a, 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 a overprint of 100 and it was a little bit different size than the stamp. So when they put them on, almost everybody is a little bit off. But all of the fakes are nicely dead centered, <laughs> the fake ones. That's the 1922 one. Uh, I didn't get into that one, but so that, that's, that's one from there. Um, on the, uh, the question about the 1911, uh, about the damage on the Shaw's commerce, uh, that one I did, I have not found a, a for sure a telltale sign that is, that is the case. So I cannot tell by definition is there or not, but yes, I look at that also and compare it to the other ones that I've, I've seen that, that goes up from there. Okay. Uh, the slides, I'm happy to, uh, provide them uh, someplace. Uh, um, I can uh, put them on the IPSC website, uh, which I'm going to... Uh, That's, that'd be great, Beruz, because... Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna... There's, a gallery, down, more yeah, there's a gallery on the uh, iranfilete.org. I just put that there. I'm gonna post this uh, slideshow up there tomorrow, so you can look at it under the gallery section, so if there was a helpful there. there's actually great exhibits up there if anybody's interested in looking at that. Excellent. Um, uh, the, <laughs> the, so I actually, a lot of the dealers know me in the US. So when I go to the shows, the, 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 the ones that like it, they ask me to come and sit down and weed out their, their question. And some of them actually want me to, I sit there, it is sad that I end up with a, like from this much, this much bad, only like this much, okay, these are okay. Uh, so. Some of them actually want me to do that. Some of them, they really don't care. They, they, I, the minute I say that, they just they basically just go away, you know, leave me alone. So it depends on the people. But a lot of the good ones, that the, the ones that you guys know as good ones, I, they actually go and they either every year or so when I get something new, I just go and weed out their collection for them. They want at least I can quickly, like this, I can quickly weed these out at least for this. All right. Uh, you're getting accolades to come Thank to you. summer seminar. And then again, where did you get your illustrations from? Which one? Someone asked, uh, where did you get your illustrations? So where did you get your graphics? Okay, some of it, uh, some of it are mine. Some of them are uh, actually from uh, Mr. Sadley's books. Like this one, the, uh, I, I used a few of them was his, from them, I actually put it together myself. Uh, uh, as an example, uh, basically, I recommend getting his books anyway. You should get all of his books. Uh, the, the few of the early ones was from his book, but bulk of the middle, everything else that I show in the middle were off of, I just basically put it together in Photoshop. Excellent. Uh, the website in the chat I did, but let me do it again. Did you guys see this? Uh, it's iranphilately.org for our friends that are unable to look at the chat when they're watching on YouTube. That is iranphilately.org. Excellent. Well, I think that we, we hit all the questions and that was fantastic. And I know that our participants are thirsty for more. So please join us again. We would love to have you. Thanks so much for joining us today, Baruz, and thank you Absolutely. for all of you for Absolutely. participating. Thank you, Heidi and APS for having me. And again, I put my email there. It's just Behruz at Gmail. Uh, happy to, if you have stuff you want a quick look at, just send it to me. I'll just give a quick look at them if you want. <laughs> well, today's stamp chat was sponsored by the APS Expertizing Department, founded in 1903. It remains a relevant service we offer members and non-members alike. If you have stamps or covers in your collection that you want to learn more about, the American Philatelic Expertizing Service has the answer. 
Submit a few items from your collection and Apex will confirm their identity and their authenticity. We are the only authority that offers a complete guarantee and Mr. Nazare is part of our expertising committee too. I'll, I'll let you know. Visit stamps.org to find out about that service. For more Stamp Chats, visit APS YouTube channel where you can find over 60 Stamp Chats covering the scope and breadth of our hobby. Use the comment box below the video to keep the conversations going. Inquiries and comments are answered while they're subscribed to our channel and stay in the know of newly updated Stamp Chats and other APS content. Please also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and subscribe to our Stamps uh, or our APS newsletter where you'll be the first to find out upcoming Stamp Chats. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next Stamp Chat. Thank Take you. Care, everyone. Thank Have you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.